So in the description, I put a link to a study that I recently reviewed that shows what just one pound of weight gain up on your waist, chest, love handles, belly, whatever it may be, what it actually does to the joints of your body. I run across and lead a lot of you that have a bad knee or bad hip joints, or maybe it's bad ankles, anything in the lower half of the body, the most significant damage done to those joints is quite possibly coming from your waist. So in this study, which you can review if you wanna get into the science of it below, but here's the highlights of it. There is a four pound reduction in damage and pressure and stress on the knee joint for every one pound of weight loss on your body. So it means when you stand up, this weight is being dispersed to your hips and to your knees. Now, when it's dispersed to the knees, it's an extra four pounds of pressure. So if I can lose one here, I drop four down there. Watch for the hips. This is the one I didn't know. If I can lose one pound of weight here, six pounds of pressure off my hips, six pounds. Now, let me give you some perspective on this, okay? If you were to gain 50 pounds or be 50 pounds overweight, all right, so if you're sitting there, you feel like 50 pounds overweight. It's like putting 250 pounds of pressure extra on your knee, the stress on your knee. And if it's your hips, it's 300 pounds of extra stress. Well, no wonder we have hip replacements and knee replacements and we're wearing these things out. If you were to go up and down a stair, when you go up or down, it adds two to three times the amount of your body weight stress across your knee joints. That means someone who is 100 pounds overweight is actually adding 150 extra pounds and extra force to their knee joint than they would normally at their normal weight going up a stair. So it, it compounds, let alone just standing, walking, going up a stairs, even more weight. There's even more pressure being placed on these joints. It's wearing them out. So the researchers were pointing out that even modest weight loss would significantly lighten the load on your joints. The accumulated reduction in the knee load for just one pound of weight loss would be more than 4,800 pounds per mile walked. If you lose 10 pounds of body fat and weight, each knee would be subjected to 48,000 pounds less in compression load per mile walked. 48,000 pounds, you think about all that pressure that gets put on these joints. Weight, it's hard on the organs. It doesn't make us feel good about ourselves. A lot of us struggle with it, but our joints are taking a beating when it comes to having extra weight on. In fact, one study found that knee osteoarthritis in obese men would decrease by 21.5% if they lost enough weight to be categorized as merely overweight. For women, arthritis would decrease 31%. Dropping a couple of pounds makes a massive difference. Now, I have a couple resources for you. Number one, I have a playlist of rehab videos. If you are struggling with a bad knee, I put some exercises to really focus on your hamstrings and your quadriceps. That creates a lot of problems there as well. You can rehab those. I also put down a really effective rehab for the hip joints and the low back if you struggle there. There are also nine other rehab videos to help you if you are suffering right now with joint pain, what you can do about it. Now, the main point of this study though is we need to work on getting the weight off. The best way that I've seen to possibly do this is through rotational fasting. It is allowing us to still have mess ups, bad meals or vacation meals, yet curb our consumption in a way that we can respond to those bad meals and we can start putting our body into a mode where it's not processing food and it can really start burning up the fat, which your joints, especially your knees and your hips, are greatly gonna thank you. So that is the next video up to walk you through rotational fasting, help you down this journey of even if dieting and programs have failed you and your eating isn't perfect and you give into some of your vices, at least you can learn how to curb your consumption, stop the plateauing and be able to rebound really quickly to bad eating habits and hopefully make those eating habits better over time. So that training is the next one up with a uh, complete guide with it. Check that video out. I put it right here for you. I'll see you soon.